Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use a custom PowerShell script in order to run a custom npm command from the GitHub repository on your machine. I was inspired to make this video after watching the tutorial you can see on your screen by Kent C. Dodds, where Kent uses Netlify's redirects in order to create a personal URL shortener. In his video, he mentioned that he had a terminal command set up to automate this process, and I also thought that would be a good idea to do. So after spending some time getting that working today, I thought it might be a good idea to share that with the video in case other people are interested in doing something similar. So to get started, you're going to want to run this command you can see on your screen now in a PowerShell terminal. This will allow you to sign your PowerShell scripts and allow them to run on your machine. I'll have this pasted in the description box for the video so you can just copy and paste it in instead of trying to copy it from the video itself. Next up, I've created my PowerShell profile and the script that we're going to be creating today and I've saved it in my documents folder in an additional folder called Windows PowerShell. This is where I feel best keeping these files. You don't have to but I thought I would just let you know that's where I've got mine. So first of all is we're going to open up our profile.ps1 which is our profile for Windows PowerShell and we're going to create a variable at the top of this file and I'm going to call it ps script dir, which basically means PowerShell script directory and I'm going to set this to a string which will be the path on my machine to that Windows PowerShell folder I was just showing you. Next up we're going to use the set alias command from PowerShell and I'm going to create an alias with the name shorten which is the name of that custom npm command we're going to want to run. I've kept the names the same just to keep that cohesion between both of them. And next up we're going to set the value to the path of the script that we're going to create. And because I've already created it, I know ahead of time it's going to be in this ps scripts dir and the script itself is going to be called shorten.ps1. Again, I've called it that just to keep the cohesion between the names. Next up, we're going to come into our shorten script or our custom script that we want to use to run the npm command. And I'm going to start off personally by creating a comment and I'm going to paste the contents of the readme that I have for my GitHub repository at the top. This is just in case I don't use this file or this command for a long time and I forget what arguments I need to pass through and what it does. So this will just be a, an easy to find refresher for me. Next up, I'm going to create another variable at the top of the file here, and this time this is going to be the path to the GitHub repository that has the npm command that we're going to run. And as you can see here, this is stored on my H drive and a GitHub folder. Next, we're going to want to get the current directory that the user's terminal is set at when they first kick off this command. And this is so we can basically take them back here at the end of running the npm command. So it's like they never left and they continue working in the location that they were at. Next up, we're going to set our working location for the terminal. And to do that, we're going to use set location. And we're going to set the path to the GitHub repository sing string we set at the top of the file here. So as you can see from the command here, we're going to want to run our npm run shorten command and we're going to want to pass in a redirect to and a short URL argument. The redirect to argument is a URL that we're wanting to redirect to. This is a must that the user must supply and this short URL is an optional parameter. If the user passes this in, it will use their created short URL and if they don't, the Netlify shortener package that that command's using will automatically generate one for us. So again, we're going to use some more variables because we're going to want to use these values in a couple of places in the script. And I'm going to start by creating a redirect to variable and I'm going to come underneath and I'm going to create a short URL variable. So in order for us to get these from the user in the terminal, I'm going to use unnamed arguments and we access them by doing dollar sign args and we use 
an index accessor like you would for accessing items and an array for it, for instance. I'm using the unnamed arguments because there's only two parameters to be passed in with the second one being optional and as I'm the only one using this I feel confident in remembering what arguments should be first and what arguments should be second. So next up we're going to access args at index 1 as I imagine a lot of you would have guessed and that would allow us to access the second argument passed in by our user. After this, I'm going to take an extra step that might not be necessary for you, but I thought it was just a nice little, a nice to have basically in the project, where I'm going to create an if else block in our script. And what this does is I'm going to check that the redirect to URL is not empty before we try and run our npm command because this redirect to if it's not supplied then we don't want to run the command because it's not going to do anything for us apart from make an empty commit to github so this if statement is basically saying if the redirect to variable is not a null or empty string and if it is we're simply going to use the write host method and write a message to the user saying you must provide a redirect to URL. So next up, I'm going to add another bit of safety catching and I'm going to add another if else statement. And this is simply to check that the short URL is not an empty or null string. This, we're going to do this before we run our npm commands. So to actually run the npm command in our terminal, we're going to simply type out how you would type it out in a terminal manually by doing npm run, the name of our command, which for me is shorten. And in this one, because we have both of the arguments passed in by the user, I'm going to supply both the redirect to and the short URL variables. Then in this else block where the user won't submit the short URL, I'm going to do npm run a custom command again, and this time I'm only going to supply a redirect to variable. And that's it, that'll get us running our custom npm command on our GitHub repository. And one final thing to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to set the location again, but this time I'm going to set it to the user's currently working directory that we saved up here at this location. So once that's done and you've enabled the PowerShell scripts to run on your machine, I've just opened up the redirects project here. So I'm going to come into my terminal and you can see I'm on my H drive and my GitHub folder. And if we run shorten and I want to redirect to Google, let's just say for example, and I want to do that at a short URL called FIP. And if I enter that, that will run through, run the custom APM command for us. And as you can see at the top of your screen here, that's added that short URL for us. Now, just to show you that this can work in other directories, I'm going to CD into my C drive. Let me clear the console so you can see it a bit better. Then I'm going to run shorten once more. And this time, I'm only going to submit the URL that we want to redirect to and this will show you that Netlify package automatically generating the short URL for us and again you can see that at the top of your screen here. Now you might notice from my terminal I have made some changes to it and these changes came courtesy of this blog post by Scott Hanselman where he showed you how to make a sort of a bit prettier and nicer formatted terminal window. And because this isn't using a normal PowerShell window, this is using Power, PowerShell Core, I did actually run into some issues in executing this custom shorten command we just set up. But what I did to fix that was I ran this command here, which I will leave pasted in the description box below. And this path here for the all users, all hosts, I had to add my PowerShell profile here in order to get them working in the PowerShell core window as well as your normal PowerShell window and as you can see in this folder here that's the same profile 
that we just created in Visual Studio Code a few moments ago. So if you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you could give the video a like and maybe share it with anyone else that's having some issues with getting this set up or who might think this is interesting. I'll also have linked in the description box a link to the written version of this tutorial on my blog and in that at the bottom of the post you'll be able to find all the code we created today so you can copy and paste that and have a play around with it and get started with it right away. So I just want to say again thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.